Hello, I am Dr. Namrata Agrawal, an ICU specialist. So today is a very unique and interesting topic, which is poisoning cases inside an ICU. So what do we do uh, when we receive a patient in an emergency during an ICU? So many people may not know, but uh, during an emergency, patient comes to emergency ward or a casualty ward, we intensivist go there to help the emergency department in settling or stabilizing the patients because emergency department is always overflowing and uh, they may need support. We as ICU intensivists are always trained to handle the emergency situation. So we also help them in handling the emergency cases. Poisoning cases can be an accidental poisoning or an incidental poisoning. So sometimes we also get some children who had ingested some medicines by mistake or we get a farmer who may be working in a field and may have gotten the poisoning by absorbing the toxins from the skin, which is called an organophosphorus compound. Sometimes we also get patients who have gas geyser in their bathroom and they take bath with the gas geyser on, which produces carbon monoxide and it can also lead to poisoning. Poisoning can be in cases of snake bite. Also, sometimes if you go into the forest area or a tribal area where the snakes can be found, like in the rainy season, it is most likely to occur. So, snake might have bitten you or scorpion bite might be there. So, this all patients may get poisoned. So, we get n number of patients, n number of poisoning with us. Many patients comes to us with the paracetamol poisoning also. So if the patient has been taking paracetamol for a long period of time, they may get an accidental poisoning. It might not be intentional, but the level of paracetamol in the blood can rise and it can cause your liver to fail, which happens with the paracetamol poisoning. We get all these poisoning cases very frequently and each and every poisoning is different. Their effects are different and how do we treat them is different. But we always and always start with the initial stabilization of patient by performing an ABC that I have discussed in detail in one of my videos in my YouTube channel. So watch that video also. I will still like to discuss it in brief. What we do is ABC airway that we stabilize the airway, we stabilize the breathing and we stabilize the circulation by giving patient oxygen, by performing endotracheal intubation, putting the patient on ventilator support, by putting in an IV line and giving the saline very rapidly. So after this ABC is done, we move on to the next step of checking the vitals and performing the neurological examination. So we connect the patient to monitor, check for the ECG rhythm, heart rate, blood pressure, saturation level and also we check the pupils. The patient is confused, patient is drowsy, patient is comatose. In this initial steps only, sometimes we might get to know about what kind of poisoning the patient has. So looking at the pupil size and looking at the ECG rhythm, we can get some of the poisoning or the toxins that the patient has ingested or has accidentally been exposed to. Now the next step is going to be the detailed physical examination. We remove the clothing of the patient, we decontaminate the patient and also check for any clue to what the poisoning may be. Sometimes some smell can point towards what the poisoning can be like in case of kerosene or sometimes in case of ketoacidosis the patient has ingested some medicines which has caused the patient to go into ketoacidosis acidosis and it will give a fruity smell to the patient. So after this decontamination and exposure, we draw urgent labs of the patient and send it for analysis. But we don't wait for the result to come before giving the antidotes to the patient. So if we have a slightest clue or we have a hint of what that medication may be, then we administer the antidote. That is medicine which will neutralize the toxins or the poison. We give it either by oral route or by an IV route. Also, we perform a maneuver called gastric lavage, that is we put it tube through the nose which will go into the stomach and through that we lavage or we take out all the toxins. That is we rinse the stomach so that whatever toxins are there inside absorption of the toxin should stop immediately. Generally it has been advisable to perform gastric lavage within one hour of the ingestion of toxins but many times patient may not come within that one hour. So if the patient has come late in the course still we do some gastric lavage and collect that sample to be sent to a forensic lab for testing and after that we give activated charcoal. Charcoal is a substance which prevents the absorption of toxins. So whatever toxins is left inside the stomach it gets neutralized by the charcoal and the absorption will stop immediately. If the patient is conscious then we can administer the activated charcoal tablets by oral route 
or if the patient is unconscious then a rice tube is required to put in the charcoal inside the stomach after the initial stabilization we talk to the patient's relative and ask them to give us a clue as to what the ingested substance may be if in case of suicidal we may find some tablet strips or some bottles in the house or wherever the patient was last seen and to get that bottle sometimes occupation can also guide us as to what the poisoning may be like in case of farmer patient may have got organophosphorus poisoning there may be snake bite in the legs we do the detailed examination by exposing the patient and we can see the bite marks if the patient was taking a bath last time when he or she was found then the patient may have carbon monoxide poisoning so these are all the steps that we take and once we have the clue we start the definitive management immediately so ICU specialist helps save life by following a protocol driven and fast action, awareness of various poisons, keep them out of the reach of the children and sometimes keep out of the reach if you feel that they have suicidal tendency. Public needs to be aware of the occupational hazards as well and the steps needs to be taken to prevent that. So I will discuss a case with you. I have seen many cases but this is a very interesting case because very young female, 35 year old female came to the ICU with unconsciousness, restlessness, irritability and we were not able to find out as to what disease the patient has got. We were suspecting it to be an infection in the brain or some infection in the body which has caused the toxins to go into the brain and which is causing the delirium, the confusion or unconsciousness. But on detailed history from the husband, we found that the lady was taking bath in the closed bathroom and they have a gas geyser inside their bathroom. The lady was found un unconscious inside the bathroom. So we immediately performed an ABG analysis that is arterial blood gas analysis and we found that the carbon monoxide levels in the blood were very high. It is not known to all but whenever there is a gas geyser inside a closed room, so gas geyser produces carbon monoxide as a byproduct. So if you are inside a closed room, you are most likely to inhale carbon monoxide inside and carbon monoxide is a substance which will bind to our hemoglobin by by displacing oxygen as our body needs oxygen it is bind to our hemoglobin but carbon monoxide displaces that oxygen and our body doesn't get enough oxygen which causes the organs to fail and the brain to lose consciousness so it is very important please be aware that a gas geyser should not be installed inside a closed room or inside a bathroom it has to be installed in a well ventilated open area coming back to the case so that lady was given 100 percent oxygen for quite some period of time gradually that patient improved but the neurological recovery was still to happen because the lady has suffered severe brain damage because of the lack of oxygen for quite some time but gradually through various therapies she was able to perform her daily activities but it took almost six to eight months for her to recover so uh, you must know what the symptoms of a poisoning may be and quick visit to the hospital might save a life thank you tube through the nose which will go into the stomach and through that we lie